today we have singer actor in the building chloe aka chloe bailey how are you doing today how are you i know you're in sunny california at the moment and we're in rainy london as per usual but it's all good yes it's all good it was raining horribly here so you're not alone from child actor to being in a musical duo with your sister chloe and Haley, to being in the spotlight for ages you finally got your debut album out in pieces how does it feel to have it out in the universe for everybody to hear it feels amazing it feels surreal it's i think because i've been working on it for so long i can't believe that it's actually on people's phones and they have it and it's not just on my hard drive anymore so that's crazy to think about, to be honest. The debut album is called In Pieces. And on the album, there's a slight interlude where it talks about you breaking down into little pieces, but always being able to put yourself back together again. So from the T.O.P., so there's no misunderstandings for anybody listening out there. Break it down, the title of the album. Yes, so the title of the album, In Pieces, definitely represents a broken heart. And from far away, Somebody might seem completely fine and perfect and like nothing's wrong. And when you come up closer, you'll see all the cracks of where they had to glue their broken pieces back together again. So that's what the title in pieces represents. And, you know, on the flip side, it also represents the box that people have put me in. It has shattered completely into pieces. I mean, do you want to elaborate on some of those boxes from being a child entertainer? What boxes do you feel like you've been put in so far? Yes, so the boxes that people have put me in, I feel like because I'm very liberal and open with my body and about the topics that I talk about, people think I'm just one way. And that's how my exterior outer shell is. But inside, I'm such like a nerd. I'm more than just beauty. I'm brains. I engineer. I produce, executive produce this album. And what I also wanted to shatter is everyone who told me that I could not do this album looked me in my face directly in my face and said I could not do this and I never would be able to and mm -hmm. here we are so that box is shattered and mm -hmm. I just want to continue to prove myself wrong for every time I doubt myself and don't believe in myself and that's why this album means so much to me because mm -hmm. you know it's it's more than just internet people or things like that, but people in my actual life really made me feel like I, I couldn't do it and I'm doing it, so. Let's talk about this song, Prayer Away. It has a very strong message right from the beginning. There's some cursing in it. It's raw. I mean, I like it, but it might rub up people the wrong way. I don't know. I'm just saying, but just break down, Why? you know. Why would it rub people the wrong way? I mean, I like it, but it's just... It's so raw from the beginning, if I'm honest. What I love about it is because it it totally gets the feeling of when we're heartbroken and pissed off. Like we're cussing to ourselves. We're like cussing the person out in our head. We're like all this stuff, like everything that was bad about the person, that's what we're bringing to the forefront because we're angry, we're hurt, we're human, we're in pain. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I can't create songs or an album or a body of work talking about pain and heartache without being open and honest and vulnerable in every way that is. And it's like, I'm having these thoughts about this person. I want to be able to get them back. I want them to feel the way they made me feel. But you know what, God, I'm going to pray it away. I'm going to let karma do its thing. And I'm just going to go back to perfecting myself and bettering myself. Mm. So that's definitely what prayed away was about. So shout out to Jazzy for sure mm. for writing that with me chloe how challenging is it putting raw emotion into a song because some people might just take it as a song but when you decode the lyrics there's some real ish in there i mean how challenging is it putting that into a song to be honest it's not that much of a challenge because i'm such an open book and i am very emotional i cry at least one time a day at least and you know all the things that I've been scared to say to people, to the ones who've hurt me, to the ones I've had fallouts with, things like that, I put it within the music. Mm -hmm. And that's how I'm able to say what I already was holding in deep inside. So when I end up getting into the studio, you know, it's usually just me and my engineer. I end up just like, like waterfall bursting so it's very easy it's therapeutic you have been blessed with some talent chloe not everybody is 
blessed with this type of talent. You've been a child actor, you've been in a musical duo with your sister, and now you're a solo performer, a solo artist. How have you found that transition from child entertainer to adult entertainer? To be honest, I never thought about it like that. I think because I've worked in since I was three and a half, it's really all I've known. So as I evolve as a human being, naturally, the work grows right along with it. You have a massive co-sign. Co-signs don't come bigger than this. You are signed to Beyonce's company, Parkwood. How is it having Beyonce in your corner as a solo musician? It feels amazing having her in my corner. I am always inspired by her, always. Like, because of her, I do what I do. And I'm so grateful for her guidance and her love and her mentorship. She's the best and she's still killing the game, still. I've been speaking to a lot of artists about this recently. We're in a digital world. The digital numbers are very much there for everybody to see. The views, the numbers, the streams on the digital platforms, on YouTube and things like that. In your opinion, how much of a correlation do you feel like there is between the songs with big numbers and how good a song actually is? I feel like when you pay attention too much to the numbers, you can lose the love of the art. To be honest with you, you know, there's incredible songs that I'm such a huge fan of that doesn't really have that many numbers. And because it doesn't, people think that that equates to how great a song is. Mm. And, you know, there's some songs out there who have insane numbers that if you really break it down from a musician standpoint, it's not that amazing. Mm. So I think for me, it's a it's interesting because we need the numbers, we need the streams, we need the radio plays as the artists. We need that, you know, it's a business so that we can keep going, we can keep putting out projects, keep going on tour, things like that. But then at the same time, it can be so suffocating because as an artist, you never want your mindset to be on numbers first. Mm-hmm. You don't want to create starting from the basis of numbers and Quincy Jones always says something. He says, the second money enters the studio, God walks out the room. Mm. Meaning when you're thinking about creating from any standpoint other than the art, that just shows you right there, you're not allowing yourself to be the best that you need to be because of the worldly things clouding your mind and your Mm. creative expression. Mm. So... It's definitely difficult to balance because I just want to nerd out and make the weirdest, coolest shit and things like that. But it's like other people on the outside put their two cents in thinking, is this in a stream? Is this going to go viral on TikTok? Is this, you know, so if you pay too much attention to that as an artist, it can create a creative block for you, Mm -hmm. which it did for me, like Mm -hmm. in the middle of creating in pieces. Mm. I was trying to create what I thought people wanted to hear from me rather than just being myself, my Mm. weird, loving, hard sound self. Mm -hmm. So once I took myself out of that mindset and I'm like, I relinquished my control to God and I was like, you know what? God, please just let the music get to the people who need to hear it. I hope it brings healing for whoever hears it. And I'm just going to speak from my heart. And I feel that that's really what I did. A lot of artists nowadays put a lot of currency in going viral and creating social media challenges. How do you combat those kind of pressures of having to to go viral and create challenges to get traction on social media? You just kind of have to ignore it in a way because if you get so obsessed with that, you'll take yourself on a downward spiral. But it's hard not to think about that because... You know, with brand deals and the labels and things like that, that's what they pay attention to, the numbers, because it's a business. And they're not wrong for that. That's how all businesses work, whether you're in the corporate world, whether you're in the music business, whether no matter what industry it is, and it's numbers based. So I think as the artist, we just have to learn to kind of adapt and not let that take our attention. Mm-hmm. Amen. So it doesn't affect the art. Now, talk to me about this song, Told Ya. Don't need no brother, don't need no ring. I had to say the clean version, just in case you didn't understand some of those lyrics. You know what I'm talking about, innit, Chloe? This song with Missy Elliott is an absolute banger. Thank you. 
so I wrote this song in Toronto. I wrote Have Mercy there. And I went in the studio. I was in Atlanta filming phases. I went in the studio and at the time I was really upset and angry because I had certain people in my personal life like what they told me about how I couldn't do this and wouldn't be successful and I never get my album out and things like that. That was really present in my mind, I'm starting to believe it. And that was like around the time, right when I was getting out of my creative block. And I was like, look, I said, I don't, I don't know what to do. I was like, I feel like people underestimate me. I feel like people think my art isn't good. I spend hours and hours perfecting each sound and and people just write it off as, as something that it's not. And I was like, I don't feel understood. I just, I don't know what to do. So we wrote that song as like a response. Like, didn't I tell you I was going to do it? Mm. I told you. I mm. thought I told you. You decided not to listen. Mm. You wanted to be a part of the crowd who thought that I would fail. I told you I'd win. Mm. Told you. So it's like, I got the last laugh. Mm. And coming writing such a strong and confident song when I started in such a sad place when I got in the studio that made me know that I create for a reason and how it kind of pulled me out of my funk because it's like you know what I thought I told you mm. so that song always meant something to me and I really love the beat I really love the production crazy production. and as I was mixing and getting the song so place right before I had to turn in my masters, I performed to honor Missy Elliott for the Grammy weekend. And that was my favorite tribute ever to be a part of. And after that tribute, I, I looked to my grandma who manages me and I was like, wouldn't Missy be really dope on Told You? And she gave me the eye like this. And three days later, I got Missy's verse the morning of Super Bowl. And Jeez. when I saw her texting me and she said how much she loved the record, she was like, I'm going to try to rush it in for your deadline for you. I said, oh my gosh. I said, I will hold the deadline for you. <laughs> I said, whatever you need, because she's my one of my biggest, biggest inspirations. And I would not be a black female producer without her mm. and without what she's done and contributed and still is in the game. So... It just, and then on top of that, the reason why I cried when I heard her verse is because what that song meant to me about proving everybody wrong, a legend like Missy getting on the song just added to that. Mm. And that's, that was why I cried because of when I started believing the naysayers and the people telling me I couldn't do it. I was looking at myself telling me I can't do it, but to have Missy Elliott co-sign and almost in a way pass the torch that showed me, you know what? I did tell them. I did tell them. And I hope now mm. they're listening. Chloe, a.k.a. Chloe Bailey, is in the virtual room with me right now. She is here. She's looking fresh. <laughs> She's looking, yeah. I mean, if she was walking down a high street in the UK right now, maybe in North London, it would be a lot. I'm not going to lie. It'd be a lot, man. It'd be a lot for a lot of you people out there that saw her. Have you been <laughs> to the UK before? I have. I have been to the UK. I even lived in the UK for around two months with wow. my sister before the pandemic when she started filming Little Mermaid. So I love London. And one thing I'll always say is that why does America not have the vegan chicken sandwich that KFC has out there? Because you ain't lit like us. You ain't lit like us, Chloe. The less said about that, the better. We got a lot of things here that you ain't got, man. It's just like that. <laughs> so your godmother, she's Caribbean. She's St. Lucian, right? I thought we would get some Caribbean flavors on the album, but I was kind of, yeah, like what happened? Hold on. You kind of do on I Don't Mind. Kind, kind, P2J. P2J the beats for Berna and Rema. And so, yep. Hold on. Wait a little, minute. Little Put flavors. Skirts. Are you going to expand that lane a bit more? Like oh, explore that lane a bit more? Yeah. I have some great songs in the tub. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we look forward to that. You are a talented actor, singer, songwriter. Being a child star, some people think that you will stay a child forever. People have had a lot to say about this opening sex scene in the Swarm TV series. You and Damson Idris, you have a sex scene. 
I mean, it brought up a debate about double standards, seeing as people have had a lot to say and have had an issue with you engaging in a sex scene, but little criticism for your male counterpart. How do you feel about the comments like, you know, look at Chloe, why is she doing this? I'm an actress. I didn't, I didn't do porn. I didn't do a sex tape. I was acting. And if, if whoever watched the actual show, you see, you only saw me for three seconds in the reflection of the mirror. And that was the clip that went around. You mainly heard me. And the scene was really about my incredible scene partners, Damson and Dominique, and establishing the tension and the weird, like, triangular relationship that we all have mm -hmm. so instead of looking at the art people decided to see marissa as chloe and just kind of zoom in on my booty mm -hmm. and to be honest with you it's nothing people haven't seen from me before mm -hmm. you know you didn't you did not see nipple you didn't see my private area you know i i didn't get the hype you know with all of the other sex scenes and different shows like euphoria or even all the late and great films and things like that. Nobody says anything, but I've just come to the conclusion that I'm happy that people are talking. I'm happy that, you know, whoever it drew to go see the show, it's an incredible show. I'm happy about that. And I'm going to keep doing my craft. You know, the sex scene was written in there even before I saw or read the script. You know, my character was originally given to Dom, who plays Dre. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I'm specifically picking these things to exploit myself i'm acting it's a craft mm -hmm. it's a job and you know it's up for interpretation mm -hmm. people can say what they say but we all have bodies we all mm -hmm. have the same body parts so mm -hmm. i never understood the. but just believe people are going to be zooming in they're going to be slow mowing they're going to be rewinding that is definitely going to be happening and it's going to create a lot of pleasure for a lot of people chloe <laughs> and just in case you don't know that Chloe's definitely cracking up on screen right about now <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about your song Cheat Back featuring Future is the Cheat Back strategy what Chloe resorts to or would you advise anyone like any of your friends who get cheated on to resort to is this the advice from Chloe so the thing with me is that I've been cheated on more than once and I'm not the type to give a guy multiple chances off the first time I did it, I leave. Because I believe that if you take them back after they cheat the first time, they're just going to do it again because they know subconsciously you'll never leave. So the second I feel like I'm questioning my word because of how a man is treating me, I exit the premises. I, I made a promise to myself I'm not going to do that to myself ever again. I've had enough of that. So when I got this song sent to me, shout out to Tehran again. He sent me the first half of the song and I was locked in my apartment with COVID. And I heard the song and I was also healing from a breakup that I walked away from because he was being unfaithful. And this song couldn't come to me at a more perfect time. So I immediately opened my computer. I started singing. I wrote the bridge and it, it, it just, all of my feelings and emotions were so raw. And to be honest, sometimes you gotta get people back. Sometimes that's the only way they'll listen. The tears, the crying, like it'll pacify the situation for the moment, but until somebody feels how they made you feel, they won't really stop. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of selfish, but it's true. Mm -hmm. And it's such a toxic love song. I love it because I'm speaking for the ladies and Peter's speaking for the men. For those that haven't heard the debut album In Pieces, Chloe, what do you feel like they need to know about the album? Something to know about this album. You have my heart literally in your hand. I've never been so honest ever in my life, not even in music period, but with every situation that brought me sadness that brought me heartache, that brought me pain, whether it was from a romantic relationship or friends and family that I thought I could trust, it's in here. And mm -hmm. it's for all the people who are, are who do such a great job at front having a great front face and a mask and smiling the pain away, but inside they're dying and crumbling inside. Mm -hmm. So this is for those people. Tell us some of the long-term ambitions for Chloe. What do you hope to achieve in the next 10, 15, 20 years as an artist? 
I want to win an EGOT. Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. Mm. And I want to be happy and at peace. How was it working with Chris Brown on your track? How does it feel? Working with Chris, he is the sweetest guy. I, we were on set just laughing and dancing. And he's such a sweet spirit and I'm so grateful he lent his beautiful tone and voice on this track with me. And I just think it's just the perfect blend of nostalgia.